Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm OP and in today's episode we'll be going over some of the best highlights from all of the LPL spring matchups of the day. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Go 泰坦刚才这个海克斯坦闪的位置比较差劲 打一套,Franco在身边,勾勾到了爆炸果实,那Monkey这个位置,闪现是好的,交闪一个错身闪,没问题,后不直播太贪了,想杀两个,Franco回身一个大招,砸飞了卡利斯塔,牛头怎么办
Uh, but this is the, the Baron, point. they know this is happening. It's a lot of damage coming off the back of this one here. Har Harry looking to see if he can maybe go for a bit of a flying vampire. Looks for the fight, but gets stopped immediately. The Infernal Chains bring him back again. Another Keeper's Verdict goes wide Shockwave. by Croco. Shockwave is huge, though, and that's the brand down. They can't go for the Baron even if they get the fight afterwards, but they get the flash in right on top of Fisher, and he is dead to right. AL find themselves three kills. There's no answer for Mini G. Oh, tragic. They misplayed, they misplayed around that front line last, last time. time. They won't, they won't be given another chance, chance to do so. I think if they make one more mistake, the game's over. I have to tend to agree with you. It just feels like EDG, and, and it does feel like it's momentum based so heavily. Flash forward, flash away. Monkey gonna get away from that one, as we can see now. They're trying to turn their attention back onto the snake, but now Vampire taking a hell of a lot of punishment. Has to use the Fates Call to keep him there. Harry, though, on the back end, gets punted away from the Emperor's Divide, which keeps him alive just for a second. He trades his life, because that's all he could do. Now we're going to see what Allah can do. They're going to try and just CC him down, burn him down with this Varus, this tank killer, if you will. Zayel now just constantly fishing for more hooks, more engages, that they know they're in a 4v3. That was a fight of so many different repositions, and Cal just about misses out on that last hook. There is no front line left, really, for EDG, especially with Ala being so low HP. How much can he do with a single W left? Oh, looking for more. You can see Shang Tuan's Fisher, but Fisher will not give it to him. You may not have my rod today. Now they have to work being put in there, and Hope can just walk in now and say, yeah, I'll put down a little bit of extra damage onto this turret. We'll almost take that one down as well. But I mean, the shockwave's already a quarter of the way down away. Like, it's fine. Like, you can keep going for these things, but you cannot recall there. That is just silly. Now they don't have a chain of corruption either. And Al is on a flank. They need to try and get away from him. They need to try and get away from this very imposing Cassante, but they just will not be able to do so. And now you can see the pings coming in. They want to try and maybe end this game. Good hook there from Kale as he wants to keep moving backwards but he will have to go all the way to the great screen as the EDG maybe just maybe have found themselves an avenue to win this game oh it's been a game of throws all right Shanks and Hope get taken down and that means the wave play is gone with them are they going to be able to use the entirety of this wave I mean there's only two members left and no keepers verdict now I think EDG might have just bought themselves a game one victory Maybe. They're trying to cut off the wave, though. You can see Harry trying his absolute best. Croco as well, just looking for something, anything, to make this lurk a little bit better for them. EDG now getting cut away, but That's they've it. already taken away the Nexus turrets. They'll take away the Nexus and the kills, and EDG will go 1-0 up in this series. EDG find themselves only their third they individual. They create their own pressure on, the so on whatever side of the map they choose. And they're also just doubling down on that. One person is CC'd, everyone calls it. It's like Helldivers when you're calling in the awful bombardment. You just got like the Graves turning a railgun in one direction. You got the Hoye bringing in like the Eagle Airstrike. The Varus bringing in the poke as well. We have a Nautilus and we have ourselves the Rel. Both these very strong level one champions. I think both of them have sniffed each other out. EDG, how are you getting out of this one? Oh, we'll see how they go for this one. They're going to try and just fully force in. They're going to be caught around though. They do get the first kill. Monkey will be traded back though. And that's a one for nothing. It's going to be two because the snake has nowhere else to be. And that's over to Udir as well. So a two for one trade in favor of AL and CS. So in terms of the next phase of lane, he's got an extra 10 CS of minions to work with. And it means that as you fight now around the map, you're going to have a stronger karma. Yeah, and Monkey has no flash, no life. Croco gets the kill. Really good roam up there from Kale. That was really, really well played. And even if he do with them so, so far, Monkey knows he's on a ward here. Shanks is got the push in mid lane, so I don't think they're gonna be able to go for this one. You're already, again, down on the bot side as well. Well, Fisher does have execute damage, and Shanks is low HP. Maybe that's what they're trying to play around, but they're just caught again. I just, why is Vampire going in on that? There's just no need. A flash in to try and get everybody locked in and ready to go. They're not quite able to get the damage down because it's so early in the game. A flash for a flash after Croco gets ulted on top of him. He's at the back of the pit. Nowhere for him to go. KIL not quite able to get away from this one here. But now the Snake, he's getting jumped on, but he gets himself a kill before he goes down. And it's not even going to go down. They're going to get the Dragon. And this is EDG tying up the kills straight away. So despite the fact that they caught, got, got caught out a little bit in that bot side river, the big moment here right now. Yes, it looked like Vampire went in a little bit too early, but really well done. They do get themselves some kill, equal at the goal just that little bit. But unfortunately for them, their big prize, which is that early Dragon stacking, not going to be going over to them, unfortunately. Instincts evolve once the top lane has come into play, but it's another skirmish on the bot side. Oh, they're looking for everything and everyone. It's welcome to the Bounce House, Snake. He is getting burnt down by the Ignite, and he will fall. They are, however, taking Fisher. a huge amount of damage from Fisher as they look to try and get this ult off and down onto everyone. Now, though, they have to try and exit out. Stay
stage right because this is where Hope can really do some damage. We'll pick up another kill. So that's two for one in favor. Uh, AL's top winner. Now a dive in this bot side. They would love to have the oh, ultimate available. They're going to get a teleport coming in. Doesn't land the CC though to try and keep Vampire on the turret. Doesn't need it because the Callista gets a kill back. And EDG going for that aggressive play. Get punished. Shanks was ready with the teleport. Uh, and the fact that the Callista gets a kill out of that too is just really are looking to maybe fight for it one more time. Fisher does back himself away from the oncoming Hex flashes. Everyone starts to be here Harry. and jump in. Harry just trying to be a distraction, putting in so much work right now. Look at Harry, he's with the three right now, and he's winning. That's a solo kill for Harry when everyone was on top of him. He didn't even have the help of his team just yet. Croco getting jumped on, getting cut down by Ala, who finally jumps in. And this is becoming about which tank, which top laner can do the best. To have the fate call come in, jumping onto Ala to try and burst him CC down. Chain. The CC chain is monstrous, and that is going to be three for two. Sorry, three for one. Excuse me, in favor of AL. So the question we asked earlier: How are the team fighting instincts going to change with top lane for them? And then now they're still going to lose the dragon after going for that fight. They're two thousand gold down. They don't even have plates anymore to take on top side, so Ala can't even get a cons consolation prize from that one. Shanks is hitting the bot side. It has a couple of those. Uh, Rubby buffs as you know can do such a huge amount. Anyone's legend should rule the battle. Let's tower top lane, they'll get the Rift Herald, they'll get complete control of the map right now, and for EDG, it is... Flexing their muscles like this, EDG needs to be so respectful. To be so respectful, but I will say Ala could maybe go for something here himself, gets the all out, and yep, you're dead, uh, Shanks. Not really a lot else to do. We talked about respect. He did not give the respect. And I'm going to be focusing here onto the virus and the Callista. But now, Ala says, I'm going to pop my ghost. Answered in kind by Harry on the backside. And these top laners are the difference makers right now. Hope's but I will here, say, yeah. Hope isn't here. Vampire taking so much damage. Harry almost goes down. Not quite able to hit with the collateral damage, Monkey. Not quite going down just yet. Flash forward there by KL. Doesn't land any CC. He goes forward with the... Fates call, trying to do something nice. He'll knock back there onto Hope, so there's no damage. The fear, the magnet storm, everything. There's nobody going Smoke down. Screen. And they can't hit the auto attacks. EDG turning this fight around while that was happening. 1v3, Ala gets a one for one trade. Now Harry, though, is here. Trying to see if he can land on the Shanks. Oh, oh Shanks! Vampire misses his Q, does go down because of it, but now we can see a TP coming back in. Fisher has rejoined the fight, 3v2. People will start to respawn soon, by the way. 20 seconds till Ala is here. They are going to put down the damage on the Shanks as Fisher just tries to keep him away from the Dragon. The Dragon is still the objective as this fight goes on and on. He's trying, okay, how much can they value can they get from this? Fisher's now out of position. By the way, is if you are low HP, that QW, the uh, Severin Vault, does absolutely insane damage. And now, anyone's legend, they need to be so careful about giving up another fight. Feels like it's another game where they're in a decent position and they keep throwing it back. Kyle, no flash to jump forward this time, but Crocker can instead. Yeah, they can indeed. They're gonna jump onto the snake and get that kill. The Fates Call comes out. Ala does not get CC'd though straight away. He's able to get himself away from the oncoming barrage of CC that was coming towards him. But without an AD carry, I mean, does AL feel confident to go for this Baron? Can maybe try and start it up. I don't know what they'd be looking for. Would they be looking for a fight or would they be looking for the secure the side? They have the rend. Harry's trying to hold the door shut, but you are against the Graves and the Way. Very long range if they want to really try and put together a reverse combo. Yeah. Hell, we'll jump over. We've got to look at the fight over here, then this side, though, because we can see there Harry doing so much to jump onto Fisher here. He just cannot take down the tank. It's a one for one, one for no. Hexgate taken. Can he get here in time for a proper contest, though? Ren's starting to get stacked up. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be much of a contest. There may be a fight after the fact, though. The dragon will be secured and confirmed by the side of AL. That's Hex Soul. But do they have a fight left in them? It looks like they're going to try and jump here on top of Croco, who has to flash over the wall. Shanks will take the brunt of that. They're stuck, waiting Ooh. for the big engage. The hook misses. It does miss, and they're going to try and look for the fight after the fact. The Magnet Storm and the Crash Down not going to really do a lot, and that is the rail down and buried. The rest of AL have to back away from this, but now you've lost a lot of your engage. AL, you don't really have a way to kind of fight this without having to just walk in and take the damage. It's another really messy engage from Kyle, and that means that maybe it's hard for anyone's legend to find themselves a fight, but Shanks is damaged! Oh my god, this karma is disgusting.
disgusting. Now it's a 4v4. Shanks knows the Fisher is not feeling the best. While that's happening, Hope goes into the mid lane and goes, cool, give me that objective. Like they've just leashed the Baron. They've yeah. leashed it. They can carry it on. Now they have the Ren. They have a 4v4. They can look for the fight or the Baron. They can look for everything, but we're going to have the all out. Shanks forced to flash away. They do get the snake, but do they get Shanks out alive? The answer is no. Now Croco has to deal with Allah. I was trying to just keep everybody distracted. KL goes in. Does not get the crash down? Allah will go down, but he will make a hell of a nuisance of himself. And the resets have to come out. They are going to go back onto the Baron, and this is becoming scrappier than any game I've seen so far this split. Ah, uh, yeah, this game is maybe the one where you're just going to close your eyes if you're one of these teams' fans and just look for the results at the end because the roller coaster in between those two points is not going to be particularly fun for you. You don't have the snake to kill the tanks right now. Kyle, no. he's really tried to find these engages, but he's a little bit late to the plate. I mean, they're still not really committing to the Baron right now, and they're going to lose Harry, which means they might lose everybody else. Finally, they try to look to try and turn around this fight. Just finish oh, the Baron! They haven't done either! They're no! finally <laughs> Before they get anybody out, that is the question. The fate's call is not going to be enough. The no, TP Shanks! Shanks! I'm Shanks! You. you could have just walked away. He will get a kill, but he will give up his life at the end of it all. You would imagine he's not going to get out of this. He's actually Shanks, getting what? some serious healing off of this one right now. Chain of Corruption, the fear. The Baron is killed, but now Allah can run. I really don't want we watching anymore. I've kind of been used to the LPL being a little bit scrappy, but even this goes beyond our expertise here, Asheen. Anyone's legend, they don't cleanly choose for the fight or the Baron. Hope tries to stack up the Rend. He does it for a little too long. He doesn't turn onto the fight. And once again, EDG punish the indecision, the imprecision on the Baron. Live. Because he wants to finish look the damn flank. thing. Look and we're flank. back into another fight. They're going to look for Harry now because Harry's going to try and stop the recalls. They found Fisher and Fisher is now dead. The dragon is going to be spawning down in the next couple of seconds. And you are out your mid laner. He's going to be 4v5 at best again gates. for you, EDG. The gate's coming in to try and just catch out Monkey. That's a guaranteed no 50-50 there. They're throwing out more damage on the Vampire, and he will go down, jumping onto the Snake as best they can. It looks like AL, they don't want to be the first team to give over EDG their first win, and they are fighting tooth. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think... It is what it is. He yeah. will die. And, oh, really? Oh, or will uh, he? Will he? How did, will how he? Did he get out of, okay, he does eventually die, but now Croco's in a bit of a, a bad spot. They do lose the ultimate from Fisher, but he's ticking down that damage fairly nicely. Croco should be able to dash out of that one as he can up here, but the blue is the next target. And both teams now kind of swapping positions. Look at the damage from Shanks, though. Kyle, he's still on the extended flank. They stopped him once. Can they stop him again? Do he's going to come straight out of this tri bush. Do they know? They see him now. They haven't been able to go for anything else. The all out comes in. They're going to try and jump on the Harry, who's just not tanky enough to keep himself alive. That's a great pick now from the side of EDG. And they have a wave on this top side. They will get thinned out, but I mean, they could be so much more aggressive. And being Kyle, he can't get there in time. EDG, they move away from the fog of war. And now with Harry down, with the front no down, anyone's legend are going to find it really hard to walk in here. It really is on Kyle to find a big combo. Yep, it's on Kale, but we'll see what he can go for. Baron, 3,000 HP. They get a huge Mantra Q, but they can't go for the fight. There was actually no smite onto Monkey there. Now even going to get themselves first entry to the Elder Dragon, and I no think going to take it. There's no TP. They can't get Harry here on time. They're going to look to try and get Crocker over the wall. It's a straight 50-50, and it goes over the way to EDG. Now they're looking to try and turn and burn onto this fight as they look to try and take out this flank. That flank was useless. It didn't do anything. Croco flashed in, so he had no way to go out. Double kill coming in here for the snake at EDG. They're on the cusp of getting themselves a first win here in the LPL. They will get themselves to get onto the Callista and they can beat them seven times but you can't be so much more than that. Monkey pushing in the bot wave as everyone else groups up in mid lane. Harry tries to clear it out but he's not tanky enough to deal with this virus. He can't clear the wave. He can't stay alive. EDG much. You know what? All worth it, all worth it. Allah jumping on the Shanks. Shanks does have decent waves here, but again, against the Baron Dope minions, against an Elder Dragon, against everyone else, I don't think he's got it. I say that, Shanks is disgustingly fed and having so much work to be put in here. Hit the towers, hit the towers. That's all you have to do. Just hit the it. towers, you finally do. Monkey and Fisher are the only ones left. They have to hit the Nexus. This game's not over just yet. They get the spear down. One or two more autos. Fisher ends the game. And that's the 2 0 for EDG.
does, uh, I mean, this level one's I think you just jump on the Zyre as they come back to lane. Xiaohe's in position yeah. for it. Light looks like he's just going to position himself. Abel does pop the ghost, does flash away as well. But now he's without summoners and without a support. Great move here. They haven't even taken turret aggro. Oh my god, Weibo! You can't do that, man. This is a massacre. Uh, that is really not how you want things to start. Well, just like, they don't even have to take it, to be perfectly honest. They can let as many minions die to this as possible and let Light pick up as much gold as he can. But yeah, this is a 2,000 gold lead. On Crisp the and Light, they've been unlocked from their lane. You know that it's likely that they're heading towards topside. But if Crisp starts firing arrows from out of Fog of War, this game is done. You can see that Crisp is doing exactly that. Misses it, but it doesn't matter. Cube's under turret. He's dead. I mean, this is... These are still dealing with out level sixes here on the OMG bot side, but they won't get the kill just yet, but they get pressure. So we have Xiaohu coming up, but he's going to be taken out potentially. He might have to flash away. He does so. Xiao coming up as well. This is going to be a huge, huge fracas in the top side. Yeah, more than a fracas. It's going to be more kills. As you can see there, Angel trying to jump onto Xiaohu, but Xiaohu right beside him. And look at Chris. Chris is like, come on then. Keep He's going. the AD Let's carry now. Yeah. And now Angel <laughs> without the flash. Out of carrier. Yeah, I mean, Angel going to have to run away. He should be fine to try and get away from this. But I mean, if they get more damage out to here, it should be a big <laughs> issue for him. Teleport in. Angel is going to try and maybe burn down Xiaohu, but he just can't do it. And that is five to nothing and two turrets at 11 minutes. Ladies and gents and people of all the identification, this is... What has happened to the LPL today? What, what have we happened? What has happened? EDG... How, how do you fight this? How do you come back onto this? They're able to do so much. I mean, like, even there, like, normally, under any normal circumstances of 14 minutes to take that, no problem at all, we walk away. But, I mean, all... 15 plates, 3 oh, towers... Do you knew Shahu. that was happening! He backsteps! He knew, but will he go down? That is the question. He is still healing. He is still shielding. He will finally go down. And that is a good start for Owen. And then running all the way to the finish line. Normally happens later into the game. This happening this early is something. ZDZ is pop flash. Angel has no flash. And brother the ghost, rather. And he's uh, probably going to get the solo kill. Um, I don't think have uh, all of his abilities like he did there, but now he has the rest of his team to come in. So ZDZ don't won't be going down despite missing a couple of uh, key abilities there, and the rest of his team shall bail him out just... Cool, we have the turret pushing ability, we have all of the uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddies available to us, and all the minis, yes. uh, <laughs> the, the Void Mites that come with it. Sorry already, so they already are starting to force forward the next part of the game. Angel oh, that was Angel's This is the ult, and this is going to be a disastrous series of plays now for OMG. Oh, that's the second inner turret. You were talking about how teams sometimes they get uh, a little a little confused, maybe, how to kind of push a game. Not Weibo. Weibo know exactly how they push a game. They're going to put down the Rift Herald at 18 minutes to crack open this base. They could keep going. If they get more kills, Nymera, this could be oh! a 20 minute game. And that's what they're going to look for. They've got damage, but it doesn't do anything. It's not going to do anything at all. A sh I think Shao just going the complete what? wrong direction. Where's he going with this? Top, top tier two, top tier two, top tier two. Yes, oh. he got it. He got it. That's all that matters. And he take that turret as well. Look at this. This is insane. Way more literally playing apart from Shao Hu. They will take the Baron. <laughs> that is how it is. But I, I, I completely agree with you. Like, look how long it's taking Abel in that mid lane on the minimap to just clear that one super. That kind of push in. You can see that the ultimates are available. They're just going to chip down the turret again, see how much they can get. I mean, this is nothing you can do. There's just nothing. Xiao Hao moving forward, unafraid, unperturbed, pops down the Crescent Guard, because he knows he can just survive that. That's two inhibs. We talk about how taking one inhib early can lead to some, maybe some complications. You're losing a stream of income. Two inhibs down, though, for the side of OMG is a problem. That is amazing. He doesn't even need to look for a fight. He just needs to be annoying, which is exactly what he's doing. Xiao Hu's doing the same. Baron's going down a little slowly, but it's definitely going down. It is definitely going down, but they're actually resetting off of this because Cube gets brought into the pit now and just says, hello, welcome to the other five members of this team and Baron for Taboo, special guest. And ZDZ, oh, he Q3? wants more. He wants a little bit of a Q3 to go in. The arrow lands onto the backside, which means that Angel can't even really help his team. They're throwing everything in the kitchen sink onto Bounty him. for them, but at what cost? The cost of a Baron costs your teleport. It will take away my Xiaohu uh, 
the perfect not Xiao the Hu perfect Ding. the perfect perfect Xiao Hu Ding. they will get a dragon of course oh, but i mean this is this is over at the best of things but the teeth oh the arrow gonna hit it will arrow, not hit anybody arrow. it will not hit anybody but the base is being sieged <laughs> you have all of the void buffs you could possibly want and this is almost certainly going to be the end of the game we'll see what omg can do to try and defend uh, not very much. They have six grubs. They have infinite amounts of damage and range, and they're going in. They're going in. They want the kills. The quickness comes in from PB Guard to try and do something, but that something is not a lot, if I'm being totally honest. They will just try and deal with as much as they can, but in 24 minutes, Weibo absolutely destroy OMG in game number one. The hardest engage. Fellas Mino is going to absolutely shred you down, especially with the karma giving you an extra shield. You've now got an Othello who can just become an absolute uh, fountain laser with the karma and the Milio both shielding and buffing. And they're looking for angels, see if they can get anything bot side though as we quickly shift down there. Level 2 does get hit by the Aphelios who's exhausted, he flashes away, they flash back on top of him! He will not survive, OMG get themselves first blood and a much better start to this game. Ah, Chris couldn't... Shao may be looking for something here with Shao Hu. They look for some serious damage, jumping straight no in on flash. top of the Viego. No flash, flash gets burnt by PP God. Ignite is good. Try and tick down Shao Hao and he goes down as Angel joins into the fray. They gotta get the flash out of Shao Hu as well, who gets jumps back on by Shao Fang, who takes over the effigy of his dead jungler. Where you're gonna be, we know where you're gonna try and uh, match us. And now ZDZ, oh, he gets a perfect combination there onto Cube. Cube is running for his life. I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of this one. Should be pretty easily dispatched. And they should be able to donate that one over to ZDZ. Get themselves some of these grubs. He's going to be able to get all three. I imagine so. ZDZ. Seven mana and course no ult. Won't be able to contest for that one. Way about letting that one go. And already such a more interesting game in... Uh... Finally get started up here. But Xiao Hao and Crisp are in the vicinity. Do you want to contest this as Weibo? That is the big question. They know that PP God clearing off the ward Looking towards the bot steel, side. Potentially. There is a Weaver's Wall again though. Shao goes in, likely going to die for the attempt. So he's backing off now. Yeah. I'm just going to see if everyone was... You're looking... <laughs> but now, Cube is probably dead here. Uh, doesn't really have many places to go. We'll pop his ghost and stop the CC from going down, but... There's not really a lot else he can do. He's just going to have to accept that uh, he's not giving over a assist over to Shao Hu. Yes, if he can. He doesn't have the ghost active yet anyway. Um, ZDZ and Paul moving around the map a little bit more kind of carefully to make sure you're picking up whatever you can here for your, your you know, kind of falling behind AD carry. But OMG, they're not picking their foot off the gas just yet. They're making the rotations. They're getting some decent moves around here and getting themselves six grubs. Yeah, the six grubs when you have the threats of Nautilus diving you under. Karma already in the first item. It does feel like he's... Chunk of damage onto him. Great ultimate from Xiao Hao to try and make sure he doesn't go down, and they do get the kill down onto the Nautilus. They get Xiao Hao out as well. This is a great fight start for Weibo. Walk away, but they don't get an objective, and they will lose priority on this dragon. Xiao Fang will get spotted out here, so maybe Xiao Hao might go for a little bit of a cheeky steal. It's going to be a straight-up smite fight between the two junglers, and it will be one out here by OMG. Xiao Fang might have to use his heartbreaker. No, he doesn't have a heartbreaker or a flash, so he can't get out. So, Weibo... Starting to pick up the pace a little bit here, saying, look, we're happy with the way things are right now. Flash forward with the hook. Not going to be able to land onto the priority target. Light with his first item, seeing if he can do something. But Xiao Hu gets taken out immediately. Able flashing away from the Q3. PP God gets jumped on and taken out. But is that really the primary target? I don't think so. Xiao Hu will go down. Triple kill for Cube. And OMG strike right back. Wait. This is the power of this OMG kind of mid game right now coming to fruition. They got the dragon, they got the fight. Weibo falling bit by bit behind. Another 4,000 gold now is the distance. And I really do feel like it's your fight. You need to use your power to just walk forward with a load of move speed and just try and outplay. It's very hard to do that when you don't have the stats. They're looking for a fight without AD carries, though. They are looking for a 3v3 here. Double knockback is fantastic, though. Crisp is the target. He won't get hit by the True Shot Barrage, but Xiao Hu will. Crisp has to get out of here as quick as he can. Xiao Hao just tells ADZ, leave. There's no point. We're not going to be able to fight this, and they do have to back themselves away. Abel will get a little bit of damage off the backside, and they might want a little bit more. 
They are seeing if they can get more and more of this kind of damage down onto this Afel or excuse me, onto this Cassante. The Afelio's nowhere to be seen, but this is still a Cassante. You have to be so careful of diving him. They will trade it back though, one for one. I don't know if that's 100% worth there for OMG, but they will still get their man and their turrets. Is it worth it? Maybe not. It is very funny though, and they do end up getting themselves haven't so far. Uh, I mean, game one was kind of easy blueprint, right? You get ahead through bot lane very early on, and then you snowball through that with constant playmaking and pressure. Engages more things they teleport. can use, but that's a big old teleport. They don't know that ZDZ is here. They might just try and turn a burn onto Q, but Xiaohu almost going down. He's ticking to the Deandres, and he will drop. But Q has now been caught out, and he is the next target. But again, this is the perfect Udyr situation. He is the tank. He wants to be soaking up all this damage. But oh, they're turned around. Light is just burning through everybody. They have to back away. They have to reset just a little bit to try and make sure he can survive. And that was a little bit dodgy there. It's Gosh, he was like a hundred units short of getting a three-person dust wave from the flamethrower and cleaning up kills, but it's not enough. OMG clean them back in return. It's as barren as alive, obviously. It's been there for a few minutes. It feels like Weibo. That was their shot. They've missed it. OMG, they load another one into the chamber and they come right back into the fight. They get the mid turret as a constellation prize wave. Groups up targets. If that had come through with a follow-up order attack, something really magical could have happened. And Shaohu, goodbye. Yeah, Shaohu, you mentioned certainly the reason yeah. their teams are losing games, but definitely not playing to the, the level that we have seen them play before. And that means that we're going to have top lane and bot lane tier twos taken. The Baron doing work now onto this tier three. I mean, it's hard, but it's you got to try something right now, Weibo. You're you want that third item for the Aphelios. I don't know if you're going to be allowed it because ZDZ he's already dead, and you're three v five now, and your base is being destroyed. Even with Light having the rifle turrets for extended range to try and poke out, it's just not seen. This is just becoming a slow slog of just taking down absolutely everything. Abel, oh, Abel. What? goes in like crazy, and they get him taken out. That's a one-for-one -one trade. Light can free hit because there's no threat onto him. Now they need to try and take out the Viego, but he's just chasing back so effectively. Cube will be taken as a lamb to the slaughter, and all of a sudden, Weibo, off of one mistake from Abel, they find a lifeline. It's not a life. It's not a way back into this game just yet, but it's better than nothing. Well, given a lifeline to Weibo, they absolutely had no right in having. It's going to deny the soul from earlier into this game. It didn't feel like it, but they do have one last shot. They do have one last shot. Xiao Hao separated from the rest of his team. He will go down, you would imagine, fairly quickly, although just about keeping himself alive. But now they've used a lot of the big ultimates. They won't have that. No, 5v4. They move forward. They're trying to jump onto lights, keep him from doing DPS, but ZDZ is still on the Cassante doing serious work here. They have triple inhib now down. DP God is tanking up as much as he physically is able to. Look at Light. That's the one we're watching right now. He has green and white. He wants to fight. He wants to go for something a little bit crazy right now. They're going to see ZDZ go for the knockback, but not really getting any more of the damage. Goes all out, but will be taken out. You would imagine Abel getting them down there with the last bit of the little bit of the arcane ship. I just don't think Light's got much more for it. They jump straight in on the Xiao Hu, who will fall down. Double kill coming in here for Xiao Fang, and that is going to send us to a third game in our second series. Doesn't matter if you have a million chakrams. Light from OMG. If Camille is even within half a half a map's range of someone as well, people forget how long range the hookshot flash ultimatum combo is. You can get from one side of a lane from one quadrant of the map to the other very, very quickly. Weibo cannot afford to like that destiny gate from the twisted fate to just know if you're needed halfway across the map you can get there. Yeah, and so worth noting this is gonna be the Rod of Ages and likely into Lich Bane and Zonya's. So we'll see if there's a fire cannon in there as well. We get next, kind of an unexpected angle into fights so we get to the speed and being invisible. Dragon for Grubs traded. Bit of damage on that bot. bot lane, very, very much weaker than top side. So your cross map has to be so strong to make up for it. Yeah, they're going to put all four members of everyone who wasn't the Maokai up to that top side. Now Xiaohu is caught underneath a turret here, and they're going to be able to juggle that aggro so perfectly. The flashes will have to be expended, but they got two kills. We did. We had, yeah. some, we had a lot of it. We could even go Gwen mid sometimes. Sometimes. But very true. Cube is going to get CC'd up here and knocked back. Will get Ooh. himself ulted twice. There's the center ultimate and the Hexec ultimatum means that uh, Haichau can't kill him off just yet. The Ignite, though, is going to be enough from Chris who comes in and says, we are getting this kill regardless of what this Camille does. 
Dragon, and then it means that particularly with a lot of the ults being down from OMG, the next team fight's gonna have a lot less options, but they're still gonna try Teleport coming in. You have a Weaver as well, though. Don't forget that ZDZ is being jumped on right now by the side of PP God, who's trying to make a nuisance of himself, and they will take down ZDZ at the end of it all. So OMG building that momentum, pushing forward, knowing that they can get a bit more angles on things and just having more resources available to them. Yeah, even without their ultimates, they still had cubes follow up. They still had the point and click CC of both Angel and PP God. That ends up being very important. Now, can Light get an inroad to take down this bottom turret? It'd be nice to get them get a little bit of that gold, but you gotta be careful against something like the Camille. They can follow up on this. I think Light's overstayed now. Yep, I think he has. Flash is gonna be burned down by Q, but he won't land the CC just yet. They're trying to still burn down on top of Light, but he's got no way out. He pops the explosive, uh, explosive ult, but that's about it. I mean, this is. Just Weibo making a carry on from the first series we saw of the day. It's imprecision. We look towards that big play, but they do have the follow up of the Weaver's Wall. They do indeed. They get the flick back there. Gonna go in with the ultimate from Crisp as well, and they'll get a kill. Immediately jumping straight on the Shell Fang, but he has the ultimate to keep himself alive. Cube actually goes back in with his. They're buying uh, into the fight. Shot because he knows he can go and take this fight. They've got the damage, they've got the health bars, and they've got all the kills. OMG roaring into life. It's like game one didn't even happen. They've just OMG really starting to pick up the pace in this game. 4,000 gold. They got that dragon as well. They will trade back the Rift Herald here, but they're getting complete control around this bot side. They have pop and mid pushing in for them. I mean, this is bro. We said this a lot last year. If we had to describe them in one line, it was consistently inconsistent. This team have had the very best and the very worst, and we've got another fight in the mid lane, which is fizzling out as it stands. The Herald looks to charge. They look to charge. We will get it, but not exactly ideal situation, man. This is why... So consistent. It's just so able to... Uh, throw it forwards and not have to follow up if you don't have to. Camille on the bot side, 1v2, turning into a 2v2. 2v2, and they're going to try and focus in onto Xiao Hao, try to take him out. Crisp is here, but they will have the center. Dawning Shadow over the top. The buy has gone down. Cube will follow as well. It's a one for one trade, but you can see the health bars right now on the side of Weibo are not feeling good. And they may look for a little bit more. They've got a little bit of tank stats to deal with as Xiao Fang goes underneath the tower. And I think that uh, OMG. Definitely starting to play a little bit okay. risky, and as we come back to live, Angel gets caught out. That's very lucky, in my opinion. B, it's getting a little kind of all over the place. It's Shao Hu. Where have I seen this movie before? And then we'll end up getting stuck. Kicked off by Angel and says, Look, I have a global too. And uh, she'll win for topside, but I mean, it's a Camille. They can hook shot, wall shot out of there, and they've kind of made the. I don't know, they've made a decision, but they've made the really wrong one. They, they, there was a decision made. Yeah, we can agree on that one. Beyond that, we'll, we'll return that wave in, returns back towards mid lane. You can see that wave out. They're kind of caught between the sticks right now. They don't really have a good option to go to retreat. I mean, Light already taken a huge chunk and his life is forfeit. Chris tries to flash in with the quickness, but they're so disconnected from Weibo. Look at the cohesion from OMG. They know who their target is. They're ignoring ZDZ. You're not a priority. We don't care about you because we have bigger fish to fry. Weibo just don't in this series. Weibo, a team at the top of our real of, of our standings in a lot of ways. You know, they're not up there at the six and one teams, but they're one of our top teams all the same. They looking they're gonna get felled by OMG if this carries on. Yeah, I mean OMG, we're sitting at three and four. They Easy peasy. Yeah, that was less of a Weaver's Ball and more of the guy that pulls out a guitar at a party and ruins it by playing Wonderwall. Um, the worst. And it's just, it's, it's just the worst because it does nothing here. You would have rather not seen it. You would have run something better. And there's the vial. Maybe this will be better. This might be better, but again, I don't know. If they're able to get the damage down. Good flick back there from Shao, who is able, gets taken out. But now here comes Cube on the Camille. The Tristan is dead. The Tali is gone as well. Where is your damage, Weibo? I'll tell you where it is dead in the gray screen with nothing left to say about it. Crisp getting run down here by Angel, who's going the long way around the Nexus to make sure he can't go back and heal. Camille's ending the game. OMG's PB God and Shoutbang are trying to take a little bit of a 2v2 right now. <laughs> honor, honor rule, lads, honor rule. Only 2v2's allowed. ZDZ will fall down. The Rakan goes down as well. Shoutbang, or Shout Who, getting chased down by Shoutbang and will be killed off. That's OMG with the 2 1, and that's going to be a 4 and 4 scoreline. Well, the resets happened just in time, so it will be Dragon and a boatload of cash over to the side of OMG, plus honorary arena champions. They win the 2v2v2v2 battle against yep. Weibo. We haven't seen so much of that 
in this season so far, and we might need to see them overcome a the jungle death. Yeah, well, they're jumping on the Xiaofang, and Xiaofang is still running away from this one here, gets an extra little bit of shielding, and now you've blown everything. Everything is gone, and now you have nothing left. Even putting Xiaohao right up on top of Xiaofang, and they still can't kill him. This is going to be an easy cleanup, you would imagine, for Cube, Abel, and Angel to just make sure they get absolutely everything. The CC down on the ZDZ, you're not going anywhere, son. We'll go all Angel's out chasing on Xiaofang. Still. Still trying to look for a little bit more, but I mean, Angel's still pushing on the backside of this. OMG, really just hitting home that, look, you can use absolutely everything in a perfect engage, and it still doesn't matter. Clean ace, triple kill for Abel, and OMG, 2-1, 4-4, 0 plus minus game score. And I have missed this team. Who else out there has missed some of the innovation? Yeah, we've seen the Camille before, we've seen the TF. this dragon and yes the dragon goes over but the time committed is so much more annoying than they would have wanted to it looks like he didn't get some camp steals away Aki where does have his ult but he might not even be safe here might not be even safe here as Aki does jump into him there they're gonna try and burst him all the way down and they will pick him up first blood to NIP death by a great many burning things to see an ult goes on to where chunks him out they might be able to just get the uh, dragon reset they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, um, I sat there and was like, ah, oh, what can I do? It's those interesting calculations. Well, I can divide one kill by the other kill. Oh no, I'm divided by zero. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do I need to know how to constantly get but the length and I diameter have... of a isosceles triangle? No. But what if I need to have 20 meters of fencing and I need to find the most optimal way to. to get it was the you. Area you were the man from the questions. <laughs> I was the man buying 60 it watermelons Alex at the market. It was me. <laughs> God. That's what happens when you gotta like. Easy. It looks like LNG have accepted. Look, we don't oh, have priority and we, we lose it. Sorry. I'm gonna, gonna lose. The bar 20 I'm minutes. <laughs> I'm sad. It was like 12 or 13 or something. Oh, right. So I was like, I, I just never got an opportunity. You know? So funnily enough, in that tour with Metallica, so there was kind of like a, there was, there's an apocryphal story that no one has ever kind of effectively trolled or pranked Metallica on stage before, so we have a color which is again, not leading to anything. Keep going. Um, what about Metallica? So like, I, like, I don't know if it's League sci -fi of Legends more is the, So, League of Legends is the Orn of genres. It's the, it's the priest, warlock, fighter, we oh, got a fight! <laughs> we might have a fight. Gala getting jumped on here, will flash away and immediately get jumped on by everybody else. Death! He is dead! Yes! A death. death has happened now. Can even more death happen? As you can see, Shanti brings the, the party back to his team. There's going to be a good Renata ult to try and disengage this. Zika going to move forward here with Weiwei, and Weiwei jumps in on top of Aki. Gets himself a trade back in the kill. And honestly, it's Adam G coming out on top of this fight right now. Rookie can't really go aggressive because he's just looking for Pope. All we had to mention was Warhammer, it's blood for the blood god! Korn is pleased, we finally have! Zika joining in on that fight was huge for the side of LNG. They just had so much pressure and damage just to throw out there without any real threat being thrown back. So now, NIP, they are still a little bit ahead, but Zhuo... Oh, Zhuo! Going down, buddy. Not a lot else you can really do about that. And he is going to die now. They turn their attention right back over to Shanji, who's just going to be taken Ooh, out close. as well. So Zika picking himself up a kill. I mean, Baron's on the table. This could just be LNG. LNG look to maybe turn for a fight afterwards. They're sticking on the Baron for now. On a four now. Wei Wei taking a fierce amount of damage, though, from Rookie's Pope as they look to try and burn him down before anything else. The Baron down to about 2,500 HP. They turn and try and burn onto Aki. They will get him. And they will secure the smite. LNG, cool, calm. Last year, and the devastating loss, which knocked them out of spring playoffs. And this game is very much now on for LNG. They got themselves second Drake. No soul for anybody in the near future, at least. Now, again, Fotik not really having the same level of impact that he would like. 0, zero, zero 30 CS down. They don't have winning side lanes. Maybe Rookie can do some magic, but it's looking like it's going to be a pretty hard ask. Fotik. Maybe can follow up. There's a teleport in the mid lane. They're looking for something. There's Shanji coming in with the ghost. Another TP. That's going to be Rookie as well. But he's a little bit behind the play. Gala taking a fierce amount of damage. And he hasn't gone down just yet. They will put everything into Gala. But now Zika, he's the next real target. Hung is still going to stay alive right until the very end. 
Shanji goes down for that. Look at the needlework coming out here from Zika. And that's going to force NIP into a full on retreat. Zika and Weiwei leading the Weiwei. And they are getting another kill onto this. This is LNG looking. This is a different team, Nymera. They've hit their power spikes. They understand the shim. See that. LNG using the vision that they've managed to put down into the enemy jungle. Using the pushing sideways to corral NIP into areas of the map. Let's look for these kind of comments. Gala. Tip of the chain of corruption, but the ultimate from Hong will keep him there. Scout goes up towards that top side and just says, Yep, thank you very much. I'll take away this turret. Easy peasy. Siege for now. Each auto attack from Rookie is doing about 900 damage to the squishies. He's throwing the base damage to your Q and the mimic as well. It's so, so dangerous. It's now going to be a teleport to cut them off with the pass. Uh, Scout is back. They're getting caught off a little bit here, but great damage. Aki flashes in. He lost his life. The trader one for one. Zika, though, is on the back side. Bojik, he's not, not going to get a reset. That bailout's going to do nothing for him. Now Zika versus Sanji. As Sanji wants to take that 1v1, and he will get it. Sanji stays alive, but it's Rookie and Sanji versus the world. 3v2. They're trying to see what they can get. Rookie almost manages to clean up the back end of that fight. Serious credit for, for these waves to just crash in, get confirmed. Everybody just starting to move back now again. Great wave clear available to the side of NIP as well. So time's going to be as easy as just sieging up a Gala. Needs to be very, very careful with how he positions. He will lose the ultimate from Milios, but I mean, it'll be off the cooldown in about 30 seconds anyway. He's got a GA as well, so it's not. That was kind of it. Uh, you can see that brand is adding a lot in terms of wave clear values to the individual gold Rocky. It's not there we go. all of the fights, but it. Definitely helps to a certain extent. So, mid lane inhibitor broken open. Is it going to go down? Not quite. So the turret is down, inhibitor lives. No super minions just yet. Cloud Soul will be. Everyone resets. These redemptions have been really clutch, actually. It is about those individual chunks. The actual engage itself is quite hard to work towards. The culling comes out under Shanji, half HP on the tank. That tool no longer up, though. How late. much can NIP going into Fog of War? Uh, Rookie is just going to be the only one there. I mean, the bar of a late reset here coming out here from the side of uh, NIP. LNG are going to finally break open the base and potentially take over this game. Their damage is insane. Yeah, L NIP cannot afford to let them hit turrets, which is exactly what they've just done. The LNG are not over chasing into them just yet. You can see how much damage Rookie is taking every time he jumps forwards. He has the healing from Fleet Footwork. That's doing a good amount. At least they do have a good amount of wave clear with the, the shiv and the extra AD from Rookie. So auto attacks doing enough to clear that one out for Sir. Uh, Lethality virus, no strange to killing two creeps by himself. But NIP, they still don't have aggressive options when he jumps into Wei Wei. Lucky to get out of that. Now he's being engaged. Hold of fear, Shanji. Still very tanky, but is he enough to try and stop the Gwen? Zika burns through him like paper. And that looks like it's going to be all she wrote for this particular game. LNG will take the advantage in this best of three. And the G and LNG might stand for Glacial, but you ever seen the size of one of the things? They are absolutely immovable. They are creeping and they are inevitable. LNG, it was a bit of a rough one, but they end up close. G, they've done their due diligence. They've Crossed their eyes out of their T's and got themselves into a nice little position. Right now, Ren's starting to get stacked up. Scout on vision. They know he can wall them off. It's the stacks coming in. LNG will get themselves that Drake. And we'll oh, have ourselves on. an Ocean <laughs> Soul. So nothing else going to be happening right now. Flash in. Ooh. Sorry, not flash in. Flash away by Fotic. This is the Callista, Renata. But they haven't given up kills. And I guess that means it's not the worst case scenario. So something like that. And we know that um, LNG, they're really waiting for like the perfect flank moment. So if that doesn't set itself up, it's going to be a little hard. Oh my gosh, it's going to happen right now. Rookie, Wei Wei he has this fault. He can go for a shuffle. He we can get go. it. I don't think they're going to be able to get it just yet. They're going to go all out. Shanji looking for a little There we go. <laughs> Rookie dashes out as well. But now Wei Wei, he wants to make this fight really happen. Flash forward, Emperor's Divide, and the shield. Rookie, oh my lord, he almost survived it. It's a two for one trade though. And finally, a 14. Glacial present. Rookie will be taking the first turret of the game for his team in the side lane. And Scout will get his in the top lane. They have uh, shook hands and said that's just how it is. Dragon is on the Rift. They are going to put down the Rift Herald as well. See if they can get maybe some kind of pressure on that. Don't know if they want to fully commit to it. So yeah, you see they're not going to go in. And uh, 
fully go for the tower taking. TP gonna come in. That's gonna be Scout joining this fight after the fact. Ooh, Shanji is like getting nailed here. Yeah, he really was getting a fair bit of damage just pumped into him, but this is potentially soul point here. And I think Aki, yeah, you just gotta give this one up, I think. They're not really in a position to try and fight it. They're not really going for it. There's the first ult of the game, and it is a fantastic one. Way, way, very low. And Shanji Ooh, the steel. not quite able to get away from that one, but the steal is fantastic. They just left Aki just all alone, not really thinking about anything. Scout does have a flash, will get over the wall, but an abyssal dive will bring him all the way back. And that is going to be a nice kill as well. So NIP, they they win the fight. They win the dragon. NIP is starting to come to life again in this game. Very fast in the LPL, and he's used that to great effect. But of course, Rookie... One of the other masters of the mid lane. These two have played against each other for a great many years. Rookie going back towards top lane. Scout trying to push it out. He's just been caught. Yeah, no flash. Scout and Zika TPing in as well. They can turn this one right around. That's 3v1. Oh, Glacial Prison misses though. Votic! Flash, flash, oh. flash! And that is that why the raid boss is known as Aatrox. He does get taken out at the end of it. But I mean, if they lose Weiwei here, they can't go for the Baron afterwards, but here comes Gala and the hostile takeover. They can turn now themselves and go for this Baron. Kasanji wasn't around. Kasante wasn't there. Oh, he doesn't even have the teleport. The apart from the hostile takeover and the Crescent Guard. Now, Scout and Scout still has his wall to impact the fight. Oh. Without the Sichuani ultimate, that's a big moment. And being able to wall them off from the Dragon for a good entry, LNG might be able to just take this with a rank. Yeah, LNG now. It's going to be a 50-50. 500 secured. They got the smite down, but now the fight after the fact is the big one. Gala pushing forward with Hung. Throws him in, forcing Hung to flash away after the Fate's call. Scout taking a big chunk of damage. Everyone just kind of limping away right now, but look at the pings on the minimap. They're so, but the rest of his team aren't there. How much can this Aatrox do? They even used the ultimate from the Senna. I don't know sure if that was to kill down the Baron or not, but here we go. We're going to see if they actually get enough time to get this. Yes, they do, but do they have a flank? With here we Zika. go. He's going for the Glacial Prison. Misses off the side. Botic immediately has to get devoured there by Zhou. They get Shanji taking Gala into the backside. Gala survives somehow. Shanji now has to be in full retreat. The Baron has been secured, but can you get out with your life? Double knock. Oh, the pull. Huge, but the Emperor's Divide does just that. It divides everybody away. Wei Wei with that Crescent Guard. Gala flicks back. Shanji found him. And despite everything, it's actually NIP who come out with the kill! Dread it! Run from it! Because Shanji is inevitable and the fight continues! But Zhou, what have you done? Zhou goes in and Zhou goes to the base. He wanted a quicker recall despite having the Baron buff. And now Fotik in a lot of trouble. He'll get taken down as well. They're getting so much work done here. Shanji gets taken as well. There's only two people left with these Baron buffs. Rookie trying to see... In case, and they should be able to get this turret as well. So, right now, NIP... They're just pushing in, gaining more advantages, gaining more kind of foothold in this game. And they even popped down the legacy of Sharima, so they're going to have the tower. And the TP is going to come in as well to try and set that one up. But a TP on the backside. This is your moment. The Talia wall does separate them out as they throw everybody back in. But he's a little oh. bit too, little too late. They're going to try and make him work. But Aki's playing bouncer. You can't come in. You're not allowed. That ID is fake. And now he loses the ultimate from the Aatrox while the turrets are still taking damage. Just not quite able to time the Aatrox engage. The vision on the in, into the enemy jungle alerts NIP to where Zucker is coming from. And the Aatrox can't quite get it done. You won't have the World Ender for a little bit. It's fairly low cool. The they know it's there. They've actually replaced it right there. So, Botic. I don't think they saw oh. him. They do now. He run stuff. He just it. hopped into the bush. He has World Ender. He has Flash. He can try and get himself manually into a flank angle. See what we can do with it. Scout, how's this wall going to work? The Rend is trying to delay for Wait. the Baron's dragon to be taken TP. down. TP, Sanji's going to end the game. Sanji and Rookie are ending the game. They just need to keep them here. It's a back door because they have the super minions coming in. Just stop them from recalling because the TP came in from Scout. They've done they it. They've no TPs. They go for it. The double TP to turn it all around. NIP. No way do you end this game like this. They will send us to a game three. And that is exceptional coming out here. For, exceptional shot calling coming out from the solo laners. Oh my gosh. Before this series began... Scout not level 6. Not level 6 is Scout off of Vision and has his ult. Don't be 
I think it does from the way it's lit up there. It's so does level 5. Ooh, 50-50. They're going to look for it within the 43 HP. It is secure by the side of LNG, but they lose their jungler in that first blood. Now Scout getting jumped on here. It's a trade of two for one. You can see Fotek just putting in the spears right now. Thought, thought about going for a little bit of a flash over the wall. Didn't want to commit to it as, as a top 10 contender. And hell, like, we're getting to the point where we will start, you know, securing teams into playoffs. We will start to... Oh, Pop lost some Fotek. Oh, he gets flashed on. He cleanses a little bit too late, but he is still good for the moment. Until the... Dawning Sky breaks upon him. And all of the Ruin King built up from the Callista. Scout, fantastic pick off. Gets away from Vision and punishes the enemy AD carry. He's going to buy a bit brief rest. Secured by NIP. Now we'll wait to see where everyone wants to go with this one and see what kind of match ups they can take. No flash, remember, or ult onto Scout. So he's in a lot of trouble. They are going to go all out and they're going to choose the correct one. Shanji says, Nana, nah, Fotik, you don't get revenge. I gave you vengeance. <laughs> No flash, no ult, no hope to get out of that play. So Scout goes to take this. I mean, even someone like Birdall has had some great moments. This is very, very variable performance. This is just a, a really good movement here from LNG to try and bait them into the turret. They'll get the kill onto the Lee Sin. But a double TP does mean the Sanji can keep everybody away as they try to jump in on top of Rookie, but a Q3 not going to land. Anyway, taking so oh. much damage right now. No ghost available. There's the Fates call coming in. They're trying to seal their fate. The hostile takeover is just that. They take them and turn them on their friends. And this is a great bit of play here from NIP. It looked like NNG had gotten the, the rug over yeah, there. Well, we'll see even Hung away way. I think you could maybe, maybe not something that kills you anyway. That could be enough damage. Oh. For the ult from Rookie just barely missing. That's a chance loss. Chance loss, but... A flash gone from Gala it means he has no response should he get caught out now by anything except for the Devour from the side of the, the Tam Kench. Fotik will be able to heal a little bit off of this now. They drop the Rift Herald into mid lane, going to drop it into that turret fairly quickly. A reset from Rookie as he does have himself at the Secret's Arm Guard. So he's got Azania's potential to make this one work for him and his team. Here we go. He's going to flash Shout! in! Four man knock him on the pop loss of a can. They get the damage after the fact. There's the hostile takeover doing work. They just can't kill off anyone here. And they drag Weiwei right back into their team and say, you got a good ult, but that was about it. Now Shanji needs to be very careful with how he takes this rest of this fight. He's got himself a little bit of an ult to come into this. He's trying to dodge, but he had nowhere to go. And it's a one for one, but LNG importantly lost themselves their jungler. The Pop Blossom was top draw, but draw answers in kind with the hostile takeover. That's the only That's slip. There was a brief moment where they could have spotted the minions. I think that Santa Shroud, though, just gave them a little bit of a, a, a bit of a head scratch here. They get caught out just about. Back in now. The dragon started up here. Thanks for the leash for the moment here. LNG really need to try and secure this one. Stop the stacking going down. Here we go. Fight fight comes in. LNG secure it. Now they're going to look for the fight after the fact. The Crescent Guard doesn't get way, way to safety just yet. He's going to get knocked back and killed off. 20 seconds till the Baron spawns. If they get another kill onto someone like a Hung, Kick. they're going to be able to get so much value out of this. He has no flash. He has no support. And they're going to be able to do so, so much from this. That it a Vitzel Dive does not lead him to safety. That's mid lane turret. That could be the Baron as well. They could just turn and burn for it. I mean, it's just spawning now. There's no one just try their luck. Gotta do it. There's a TP coming in here as well from the Aatrox. They've got Weiwei coming in very, very soon. There's so much, much, so many spears in this from the Renstack Stout. Looking for something. We'll get a three-man pop blossom, but there's the hostile takeover doing again. Just great work. The spike comes in. The Ren confirms. Baron is given over to the side of NIP. There goes Scout. They have got the the bailout, but it's not going to be enough for Kasante. This Aatrox is massive. Zika is doing so much here, but can he survive? Fultic. No, he can't because Fotik is doing more. More. He's just dancing with death, dancing with the devil. They get everything on top of him and finally take him down. It's two kills to two. And this massive movement here, as we can see, Weiwei now hunting for Rookie. Hong trying to see if he can get on top of him as well. Rookie will be going down, and they will be gifting that one over to the Xin Zhao as well. Zhuo will fall. The Baron is secured, but the fight Especially goes... Especially these item breakpoints. Gala with that amount of kills has a lot of extra gold. Sometimes the Fasting Center has a little bit less of it. It kills very much will be soul point for LNG. The second one from NIP. Less important for them, but very important for them to deny it. Votek looking to skip and hop forward again. Do something flash in. Oh! 
not quite able to do it. Denied by the handshake, but can they get the fight after the fight? The flash in, the kick, kick. is good, and they get the all out as well. Gala is dead to rights as the Kasanji rips and tears through him. Hong next on the chopping block. He tries to flash away. Will he be able to get over the wall? Yes, he does. But I mean, LNG. Rip and tear until it is done. Gala couldn't get in range of the Tom Gan. She didn't have to devour anyway at the start of that fight, which meant that he couldn't retreat back to safety. And Ellen, he gets caught out. He should be fine. This next fight could be game. What happened? What? Uh, I don't know. Why what were they even happened? there? They should have been prepping Gala. for Baron. And now they're getting caught up in mid lane. The two for one. Oh, it's a disaster. It is a disaster from looking to contest around the vision. LNG have fallen apart at the seams. I have never in my life been more anticlimactic in ever my casting career. That is the end of the game. That's it. Done. Dusted. It's two to one. You can't reset. You cannot go past go. You R do Rookie's not Rookie's got Horizon Focus. Yeah. He keeps getting vision. He, just, he can just keep stopping him from recalling. He can just stop him. Because, I mean, what's Scout going to do? Scout's going to try and look like he's way or way way, but that's just not going to do anything here because you don't have a flash. Your pop loss is only going to do so much. I mean, they're going to try and defend it as best they possibly can. Jro will go down after the fact. Botic just keeping himself alive. Hop, skip, and a jump, NIP, 2-1. These were some of the best highlights from all of the LPL spring matchups of the day. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.